position time graphs. So position time graphs is another way of pretty much doing the distance time graphs that we've already calculated up until now, but now looking in terms of positioning. So finding some reference point and finding where are we located based on that main reference point, which we consider our zero point. Okay. So vectors can also be graphed. Position is shown on a position time graph. So what I have here, these two graphs, is pretty much a bird flying, one representing a distance versus time graph, and the other one on the uh, right side showing a position time graph. So notice the main difference between the two. One, all we know is a vector because, well, if we look at um, what we have here, we're making reference to an east position from our main reference point. So we know that the bird is flying in an easterly direction. We don't really care about that for this one because we're just worried about the distance in which this bird is flying. So the slope of a position time graph, uh, just like we've uh, done before, calculate the rise and run. Right? We find the take two points, find the rise and run of a distance time graph, we will find the average speed. If we take those same two points, but if it was a position time graph, and we find the rise and run, we are now going to find the average velocity. Okay, so scalar quantity vector quantity okay vector all vectors include a direction here for the scalar ones we don't care about the direction in which this bird is flying okay. notice the difference between a distance time graph and a position time graph both showing similar information right both showing uh, the, the flight in meters, time in seconds. Only difference is, well, one made reference to direction, and that was the vector quantity, the, uh, the position time graph, and the scalar one, which was the distance time graph, just dealt with how far the bird was flying, how long was it taking the bird to get to that distance. 